We're running out of ideas. What deck should we do? What's up, guys? Joe here with Monarchs. Welcome back to Yugi Boom, everybody. All jokes aside, I did make Monarchs after getting my face pushed into the ground by this deck for hella years. I never really played Monarchs. I have more of a simplistic, like, intro to Monarchs kind of deck. I didn't go extra deck mon Monarchs because if you're going to play Monarchs, be oppressive and play Domain, you know? Um, I really did make this deck because Pantheism came back and that card's just so good and it makes this deck stay consistent. Um, if you're not familiar with Monarchs, I'll explain a little bit as to what Monarchs do uh, throughout the deck pile file, but for the most part, I'll just explain my ratios and my choices and uh, let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to start off with 3 Idea because not only is she your main 1 for 1 target, she's going to get a lot of your plays going by summoning your Eidos out of the deck. And also when she's sent to the graveyard, she's going to let you get one of your banished Monarch Speller traps back to your hand. And with Pantheism, that just goes hand in hand a lot. Um, then Speak of the Devil, her buddy who also goes with the pair. Now, a lot of people don't play 3 and 3 of these cards. I've seen a lot of 2-1 or just 3-1. My justification for running three is because even though you don't want to flood your hands and it does suck to open multiple sometimes is your Eidos is going to help, or Eidos, however you pronounce it, he is going to help you get your Idea back. So just to keep that moving and keeping extra plays going, I mean if you get your domain and a strong monarch out, you're pretty much set it, sitting against most decks with your primary strategy, but they're your ones who are going to get the plays going and help you not be flooded full of monarchs who can't be summoned. Um, so that's why I chose three and three and it's just a nice way to get familiar with the deck and I might cut uh, him down to two in the future but for now they're working good at three and three. For the last little I guess baby you'd call him as we do play Mun Mithra the Thunder Vessel. Now Mithra does not really come up much but it's one of those cards that when it does come up it's going to be usable. It, she just facilitates the same thing where a lot of these cards in Monarchs are going to either, either give you additional normal summons or sets or um, summon themselves because of meeting certain requirements like having the 800 and 1000 attack and then you'll notice the other mon uh, the bigger Monarchs search things based off their attack levels. So I don't use Mithra that much but it is a from hand effect so just kind of getting used to the deck i still like it for now but this could possibly get cut for a turbo spell or trap now we get onto your butter monsters like the ones that actually make a difference who also got some ban list lifting in previous lists it's going to be our aether uh she's definitely next to your erebus like the best monster in the deck um she's gonna get plays off on your opponent's turn which is part of the reason why she's so good and in fact we actually have a funny story at yugi boom where um abe and machuka were playing extra deck monarchs and regular and um domain monarchs versus each other and their decks were so intense and long that they forgot whose turn it was because they were doing stuff on each other's turns so um that's part of the reason why i love ether and then the other part is that she summons another uh, monarch out of the deck to help you get a little bit of extra pushing and then at the end that card will go back to your hand kind of helping you get more effects off by tributing stuff the next turn plus unfortunately they're not 3k but they are 2800 which is pretty beefy and they're going to be a lot of the monsters you want to sit on most of the time next we have our erebus who um just like your ether he's going to be something you want to keep cycling through depending on what they're doing so um Pretty much if he's tribute summoned, you can send, uh, send two Monarch Spell and Trap cards with different names from your hand or deck to the graveyard. And if you do, shuffle one card from your opponent's hand at random, graveyard or side of the field, into the deck. And that's what's nice, is that they both help you dump your Monarch Spell and Trap cards to the graveyard. And if you, when we get to the Spell and Traps, specifically the Traps, you'll see why that's important. And that's also why we run multiple copies of a lot of our Spell and Traps. But I know Monarchs are pretty old and I don't have to go too into these cards effects for you guys. Um, next, one of my, I'll admit, probably most, like, sus choices is I don't run many other Mega Monarchs, um, besides I just run the one Thestalos. Now, I know, you know, the water one is nice too, and removal and pops are also great, but I do love messing with opponent's hand a lot more, and I just haven't really seen the need for those other niche effects, because your main goal is to go first, get domain, something that's tributed to it out, and just lock them out of the extra deck, and hope that the core of their deck isn't good enough to combat that and then possibly your side deck can help facilitate 
facilitate anything that you're struggling with post game, right? And so I just really didn't see any need for them, especially because I'm still rocking the Vanities Fiend, and I'd rather just have other easy to tribute summon monsters that do more controly effects. And so that's why I just run the one Thestalos. Now for your regular monarchs, I do run a couple. We run the one Curaz. I still run Ryza. Uh, it's been not very suggested amongst some people when I was getting tips for monarchs, but um, just the type of removal he does is nice for things that can't be destroyed and stuff. Kiraz, you mainly can pop your own stuff, like dead, like spells and traps you don't really need that are continuous, and um, you can also use him to pop if you don't mind uh, letting your opponent draw. Um, and then of course I do run the one Caius for the same reason, like a removal that's not destroying. Um, and then the last level 6 monster that we run that's not a monarch is we still run the Vanities Fiend because as I mentioned earlier if you're running the domain version of this deck your goal is ultimately to be a scumbag that doesn't want your opponent to do anything. So a lot of the times if you can get your domain set up and have a Vanities Fiend like it's pretty nasty and not much can be done. So that's it for our monsters. And now we get on to our spells which is probably the best part about this deck. So normally I'd go straight into the spells by showing Domain, but because it just came off the list, we have to start with Pantheism of the Monarchs. Um, this one I will go into its a full effect just because I want to stress how broken this card and how grateful I am and how much I advise you to play that this deck before they realize that bringing this card back to 3 was a mistake. So if you don't know what Pantheism does, uh, it is send one Monarch spell or trap card from your hand um, to the graveyard, right? So there is obviously better um, cards you can send, but you, you'll pretty much dump anything for this. Then you draw two cards. Now the, uh, the reason why this card is also broken is because its second effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard, reveal three monarch spell and traps from your deck, choose one from your, your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand, and then you shuffle the rest back in your deck. That's broken for multiple reasons. One, because it didn't say they have to be different names, so you can just throw, choose three tenacity, which is inherently going to get you whatever you want in the future. Um, and you can keep just cycling this back with your idea and just keep dumping and just doing dumb crap and drawing. It's like, it literally sets your plays up and does like extravagance or desires without those sacky risks, you know, or needing to have a deck that run stuff. Obviously we can't run extravagance because you can't have an extra deck period to get off our effects, but just ignore that part. You get my stressing of how good this card is. But with that being said, we follow Pantheism with three domain. It's your field spell. Um, this is what's going to let you stop your opponent from their main way. You're going to keep your opponent from summoning the extra deck if, you, if you're the only one who controls a tribute summoned monster. And uh, it's also going to give it only, unfortunately, only when you attack, but it'll boost your monarchs up 800. Which, honestly, this card would probably be too broken if it was also when they were attacked, if I'm being real. So we'll accept that but just keep that in mind don't put this out thinking you're gonna be safe and always get over 3k monsters because you could still get your if somehow they summoned a monster without you know from the extra deck like a boss monster they can get over your monarchs fairly easy you know so um but the good thing is the your big monarchs are 100 over baldaroch or they're actually equal with baldaroch i think so you're just gonna ram into him like but that's the random thing you know you just gotta worry about those other boss monsters so then we come into Tenacity of the Monarchs. Uh, this is what I said earlier, that is, if you don't have any in your hand, this is going to be the main thing you pull out three of, so they have, obviously they're going to give you Tenacity. But this is reveal a monster with 2400 or 1000 defense, 2800 or 1000 defense, so pretty much either the small or the big Monarchs. Um, and um, after you reveal one of those from your hand, then you add a, spell or, a Monarch spell or trap from your hand. Um, deck and that's why I said that revealing three tenacity is pretty much going to get you any spell you want without giving the option of not getting the spell you want because tenacity is inherently going to do that for you so that's what's great about that. The next I do play three return now I don't play three return because as good as this card is like helping you search once you tribute summon and such it's mainly here because we need multiple names of monarchs because our other dumping cards do have to be like um, all the dumping ways need to be different monarchs um, spell and trap names so you want to have as many names as possible and also just not destroy too many of the ones that are really good you know like you don't want to send all your storm forts to the graveyard just to get the uh, the plays off you want to be able to send a mix and still see copies of certain cards because as much as return isn't in here at three because we want to see it you also don't want to not ever get to use it 
And then the same goes with the Monarch Storm 4th. Like, this one probably a little bit more than the, the previous because this is gonna help you tribute summon or tribute your opponent's monsters. So it's like our tribute summon version of Super Poly, you know? Like, it's just really nice removal in that sense. Um, but also it's in here at three because it's nice to just dump a couple of it to the grave, especially because we know if we need to, we can search any Monarch spell or trap we need anyways. So that's our justification. Then the only Monarch spell and trap I am, or Monarch spell specifically I am playing at one is the March of the Monarchs. Um, mainly because, you know, I don't want to flood the deck too much and being destroyed isn't really like your big problem in this deck when you have everything going for you um so this is just nice as an extra floodgate like if you open it or if you see that you're you got a good game state and you can just go for that extra little bit of annoyance getting march out is nice to just protect your monarchs a little bit more and i guess that's also the justification for it being at one is we can search it if we need it you know um, then to round off our spells, it's, it's just our one-ups. Of course, we play Terraforming, so a fourth copy of Domain. Uh, Reinforcement of the Army, which is a fourth copy of Eurydea. And then one for one, which is not necessarily a fourth copy of her, but it's a fourth way to get her out besides having her in your hand. Um, or having, um, yeah, exactly. So that's why we still run those. Uh, obviously, it sucks Terraforming being at one, um, but it's not that big of a deal for us. Um, you know, such as we're searching so much, but if terraforming it did, did ever come back to at least two, that's just even more ways to see domain, and I'd probably run it. Blom blom blom, little cut for the traps. Even though there's only five, like wet. All right, now last is the traps. I only run five, and they're a little bit experimental. Uh, only one I would probably change the ratios on is the first, which is the prime monarch. This would probably go up to three in the future just because uh, sometimes it's nice to just have more copies later in games. But essentially, when this is in Graveyard, it's going to be able to summon itself back as a monster that you can use for free fodder to tribute for a monarch. So that's why it's one of the best cards to dump with your effects that dump or discard monarch spell in traps. Uh, that's probably the other reason why I want to make it at three. So it's often in the hand more more and uh, able to be dumped with other cards and things like that. Cough, cough, pantheism, you know. Um, but who knew? Pa I honestly started making this deck before pantheism even came back to three. I wanted to play it regardless. So, you know, that might affect things in the future. Um, next, I do play one escalation of the monarchs and one the monarchs erupt. Kind of the, for the same reason as the spell we play at one, because they do things that you don't necessarily need to rely on, but are nice if you just search them out and set them up yourself. So Escalation is going to let you do the ether kind of thing without ether being there, like let you tri tribute summon on your opponent's turn. Um, and then Monarchs Erupt is essentially a skill drain for non, for like if you have the tribute summon monster. It's like the skill drain version of your domain. I think that's the best way to put that. Um, you know. Abe's the one who taught me Monarch, so I'm sure he'll let me know what I butchered harder than you guys will in the comment section below. So we'll we'll get to that at the end. And then the last trap I run is I just run one judgment because in my early testing with this deck, sometimes I didn't open the best and I needed a little something. And I know judgment is at three, so I could run three judgment, but screw you, I only had one ghost rare and I wasn't gonna mix match my judgments. Ugh, that's disgusting. So that's really the only reason judgment is here. And um uh, it's probably going to get dropped for the Prime Monarch, and um, if in testing and whenever the Hell Tournaments come back, I need a little bit of extra defense, my side deck will probably consist of a little bit more hand traps and defensive traps and things that let me not get completely owned when I don't set up Domain first or get to go first. Alright y'all, that's it for my basic Monarch deck profile. I still got a lot of... Uh, trial and tribulation to do with this deck as I'm still learning it. Um, please let us know in the comment section below what other deck profiles like you'd like to see. Let us know how you prefer to run Monarchs. Do you like Domain or Extra Deck more? And what differences do you do if you like Domain Monarchs like I do? Um, make sure you follow our social medias and let us know um, other types of content you guys want to see. Check that TCG Player affiliate link below in case you want to buy some of these cards. We'd really appreciate it, guys. And we're almost at 2K, so watch out for a giveaway.
And then you say pantheism got unbanned, and I'll be Just like, move the cards out the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're saying like, hey, we're running out of decks. What should we do? Yeah, okay, that's better. That's what I'll say. <laughs> and then just say, Pantheism got unbanned. And then I'll just cut to the camera quick and I'll be like, Joe here with Monarchs. And then we'll just cut it. Alright. Alright. Uh, what, what was it again, Angel? <laughs> <laughs>